All right. Today's discussion, stuff you shouldn't do in the helicopter. Number one, don't do this. That's full left pedal. That's a bad thing. Notice the helicopter wants to roll, and it kind of goes out of control, and you, um, you know, exceed the main rotor, or exceed your torque by, like, a lot, right? Now, the other thing you don't want to do is this. That's full right pedal. That's a bad idea. You should never be making flight control inputs that large when you're flying the helicopter. Not only that, but if I'm at speed, um, you should never, ever, ever lead with the pedal anyway, right? The proper way to, to turn the helicopter is going to be by banking the helicopter, and then you maintain the aircraft in, in aerodynamic trim to the best of your ability while you're doing that, which also brings up something else that you need to understand. You should never, ever, ever move the flight controls faster than you can maintain the helicopter in trim. Um, now, sometimes... Because that trim ball is very sensitive. Sometimes, you know, that trim ball is going to move a little bit faster than you can, even if you're moving the flight controls nice and silky smooth. It's just, it's the way it is, right? It's reading all the accelerations and whatever else that it needs to for the helicopter. So just be aware of that. Um, but that, that behavior of the helicopter, where it wants to roll over on you when you do those things, is totally normal. Because the center of gravity of the helicopter is going to be located somewhere right about just right about below the nose gearbox maybe a little bit forward kind of directly underneath the uh the mast of the rotor right we got a high mounted tail rotor that tail rotor thrust is oriented to the right so when i push left pedal i increase the tail rotor thrust it's going to cause the helicopter to roll to the right see there it went now if i put in right pedal i'm going to decrease the tail rotor thrust and because you know torques and forces and all that stuff are going on there it's going to want to roll to the left all right that's normal behavior compare where the tail rotor is and how it, much thrust it's going to be outputting compared to where the center of gravity of the helicopter is. All right, that's a normal thing. Other things you need to be aware of. If you try and do this like high speed skidding turn, you're, uh, you got to be aware that the, the aircraft is limited to a 45 knots in sideward flight. All right. So if I take and I, I jam in a bunch of pedal and I'm above 45 knots and the helicopter starts laterally hovering or laterally sliding, um, above that airspeed, it's also going to cause like extreme directional instability and it's going to cause the helicopter to go, you know, catastrophically awry, right? So you got to keep that in mind too, because look at the side of the helicopter. There's a lot of surface area there, which means there's going to be a lot of drag. Um, so you got that drag combined with the tail rotor and all of the effects of now, instead of that wind being, you know, uh, aligned with the direction of travel it's normal direction travel you just get this whole bunch of wind that comes in from the left or the right and that's going to affect the flow pattern of the tail rotor as well so you got to be mindful of that like they, you just these just aren't things that you do so if i want to maneuver the helicopter kill this hold mode the way i do it is first i go a little bit of aft cyclic to establish the nose above the horizon because i know that when i turn the nose is going to want to fall naturally in the direction of that turn once I've got the aircraft banked over, I'm going to put in just enough pedal to try and help maintain the helicopter in aerodynamic trim, aft cyclic to maintain a level VSI. All right, and we can come back around. All right, there we go. A little bit of pedal, trim, centers, controls, and there we go. Okay. Um, you know, if I need to do, well, really, that's it. That's that's just, that's what I'm looking, looking to do there, you know. Um, you just got to be aware that pedal is not how I turn the helicopter. It's bank half cyclic, and then you trade airspeed to maintain altitude, and then you got to feed your power in. That's the other thing. A lot of folks are flying helicopters that are way too heavy um, for to be able to be doing that kind of maneuvering flight. If you're taking off with three full bags of gas, 16 Hellfires, and the FCR, well, you've already set yourself up for failure because you have no additional power. Um, you can't even hover OGE, uh, more than likely, you know, depending on the conditions and stuff like that. And now you're at an extreme disadvantage uh, when trying to do any of these kind of complex maneuvers. So if I bank the aircraft over, half cyclic, half cyclic, I need to feed the collective in a little bit more half cyclic. Watch the torque. Okay, kind of a minimum radius turn, a little bit of collective, start feeding in the pedal and the collective at the same time. Oop, watch the VSI. There we go, hover symbology. I'm going to go trim, recenter the controls, because I'm central position trimmer. Trim right about there, and that's all right with me. Now I need to start bringing the acceleration cube back to the center of the line of sight. A little bit more collective right about there. You know, nothing there was extreme. It wasn't abrupt. It was well, it was controlled. Um, pedals is, you know, pedals are pedals. It is what it is. Um, 
but notice I'm not going full deflection on the flight controls. Uh, that's that's the one thing that you really need to avoid. You know, even if I'm up here at a hover, you know, I'm not going to go full left pedal. Because look at that. Look at that torque spike. That was that was nuts. Got up to 105. Then I go full right pedal. Ah, yeah. And then now the aircraft's got to try and counteract that, and you're probably going to over-torque the helicopter doing that as well. None of those things are good things. Just don't do that. Let's see. Let's accelerate again. Transition symbology. A little bit more pedal for aerodynamic trim. Oop, that's too much. Too much. Too much. There we go. Trim. Recenter. And fly, fly, fly. All right. All right. Yeah, so I mean, if I need to transition into sideward flight, again, I'm going to go a little bit aft cyclic, establish the nose above the horizon, reduce the collective, bring the helicopter on around. All right, there we go. We're right at about 40 knots. We're still kind of not going sideways, but you see, you get the idea here, right? I'm trying to manage the aircraft such that I'm not going to put myself in a bad situation. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. You know, and then we can come around a little bit of pedal now just to kind of help turn, get the aircraft back aligned with my desired direction of travel, and then we fly out. Trading off that altitude to gain some of that airspeed, right? So those are our bank. Oh, well, actually, that that kind of that's something to kind of talk about too. Is we got the bank accounts, we got the engine power, we got the um, altitude, and then we got the airspeed, right? Well, you want to keep all of those accounts full. So if I got airspeed, I can trade it off for a little bit of altitude. All right, come around. All right, cool. Then I can trade off that altitude to gain airspeed again. Right. Engine power only goes so far. You want to keep it under 100%. Um, or whatever your maximum dual engine torque available is, uh, is kind of the idea there. And then if I got air, yeah, so, and then if I got, well, I've already said it, so there we go. All right. Always keep those bank accounts plussed up. That's the big thing. You want to make sure that you have a suitable power reserve between your continuous torque of 100% and whatever your cruise torque is or your hover torque and all that all that good stuff. So just kind of keep that in mind as well. So we'll do it again here. Establish the nose above the horizon. Bring the aircraft on around. A little bit of right pedal to try and maintain the helicopter in aerodynamic trim. There we go. We're coming around and back out. And then I can do it again. Going to the left, I'm going to trade off a little bit of that airspeed, gain some altitude, a little bit of pedal to help maintain the helicopter in aerodynamic trim. And then I can just bring the aircraft down and around. Oop, watch that torque spike. And that's actually something else that's a good thing to talk about here. Whenever we're maneuvering like that, if I take and I pull, or I go left cyclic, I'm going to expect a torque increase. All right, I'm going to see an increase in torque. If I go to the right, uh, go right cyclic, I'm going to expect a torque decrease. If I pull aft cyclic, I might get a momentary um, torque decrease with a little bit of an NR increase. And then if I push forward cyclic, I'm going to see a torque increase followed by a potential momentary um, main rotor speed decrease all right so um there's a lot of there's a lot of aerodynamic stuff going on with that and i'm not going to address that here today but just know left increase right decrease aft generally a decrease forward generally an increase right so if you want to kind of like just go read up on conservation of angular momentum and then kind of see where the control inputs are actually being um made on the rotor disc um fa and you know Stuff like that has good resources that you can you can find out about that. So, all right, that about covers that. Y'all have a good one.